relationships uh, with you guys and make sure that you understand where we are from a brand, uh, give you a sneak peek in, in our Model Year 16 products, and more importantly, uh, to create an experience where you can engage with us and we can get to know you, you get to know us, um, and certainly uh, as you go throughout today, uh, whether it be with different people here, segment leads, um, tonight at dinner, uh, we're all available to for information, uh, to share content. Uh, we'll be uh, a little sneak peek into a lot of things for you here in the next couple days. I do want to thank uh, the New Holland Museum uh, for hosting uh, this event uh, for this afternoon. Uh, it's really a built around our 120th year. Um, and when you look at what we're doing to celebrate 120 years, uh, we're looking in the past at what made us good, what, where we are today, and, and why the brand <clears throat> continues to be strong, and then what drives us to look forward into the future. And so all of the events are set up with the, that theme in mind. Um, and you'll see some common things that we'll get into as we go through the event. Uh, a few brief, quick introductions. You met Dawn. Uh, Ron Schaefer is our Director of Growth Initiatives and Specialty Sales in West Region. And, West Region and, and, and. <laughs> So Ron wears a lot of hats, so you'll see him around uh, quite a bit. Um, Dawn's team, uh, Chris, uh, is our PR manager that you uh, have met before. Amy, uh, back here in the corner, and a number of people will be throughout the afternoon. But I do want to take a special introduction to our new Vice President uh, for New Holland, North America, Brett Lieberman. Um, we're really excited to have Brett uh, on board to lead us into the future, and so I'm going to turn it over to Brett for a few comments. Okay, uh, my comments will be brief. We'll talk more here tonight at dinner when I'll go a little bit more into some of my background. But uh, like Mark said, I mean, it, we think that this is a nice place for us to start and uh, we're really appreciative to the museum for, for, for hosting us. You know, as we celebrate 120 years as an organization, you know, literally years standing, you know, two blocks away from the plant where the first uh, small square balers were made, right? And so it really is the brand started a couple blocks away from here. If you were to go to the site where that is, there's a New Holland dealership that is basically immediately adjacent to that facility. So, you know, our roots run deep here. And uh, you'll hear me talk a lot about the heritage and the pride that's in the, in the brand. And, uh, you know, I'll take just one minute or a couple minutes before I turn it over to Don to take us around the room. But this here is an example of the pride that's in this brand, okay? If you look at the, this poster behind us, I, I had the opportunity to be the plant manager of the New Holland plant where we make the majority of our pull type hay tools for, for, for the brand. This guy in the middle here is Denny Sneak. He was a tool designer in the manufacturing plant. He's now retired, uh, but had about four years of service, right? As you look at the amount of equipment that he stands in the middle, you would think, well, he certainly must be a farmer and has a lot of passion about you know, what has been the, the fruits of his labor and his livelihood over his years. That's not the case. Denny's not a farmer, right? So we had numerous celebrations at the, at the New Home plant. The, the 200,000 ground baler that we made, the 700,000 uh, square baler that we made. So when we had those events, he caught the passion for the brand and the long heritage. So Denny has uh, basically now collected these units that are over the history and the heritage of this brand that he now owns. He's driven around the country uh, to pick them up. He's found them through local advertisements. He's found them through ag journals with advertisements in the back and for sales sections. He's found them on eBay. And I think you know the, this year is the 700,000 square baler. So he was there when we presented it to the customer and the dealer uh, that purchased that unit. Um, the customer was a guy that rolled his square baler, small square baler every year, every two years. So two years when he came back to Bob Messick, our dealer here in the area, 
And Bob Messick picked up the phone and said, hey, Denny, I got something that you might be interested in. So again, Denny's never going to use it. It's not anything about uh, I have a use for that other than I want to own that because that's the 700000 Yes, sir. Um, when, when I talked to Denny about his collection, he said he was hoping that maybe the company would someday take it over and house it. Is that... Yeah, I, the, there's always the discussion of what should we have for a presence and where should it be, right? Because if we're going to invest in some type of museum or facility, it's really for our dealerships to be able to leverage and to, to, to be able to do that heritage. So to go ahead and build, let's say, one facility in one spot, it's gonna be difficult for our entire dealer network to leverage that to, 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 to get the brand heritage. So that's always the debate. Okay? All right, so that's just a, an example of some of the pride around this brand. And, uh, you know, it started here a long time ago. And, you know, in my new role, I see it as a privilege and an opportunity now to build on that heritage and that history. And now it's about moving the brand forward and continuing to build that heritage and the, the brand loyalty, the brand recognition that uh, has been established over this long and really impressive, uh, impressive history of the brand. Okay. Okay. I'll turn it over to Don Forney. And, no, 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 and, I'm Don Welsh. Oh, I'm Don. Don. Oh, Don. He's just going to welcome me to the museum. Okay. Uh, he's our, our chair. Okay. Uh, and so, Don, just a okay. minute. I would also mention that everything in this case belongs to this guy as well. Yeah. And everything in this house. Um, we're, hap we're happy to have you here today. And, and uh, I would say that every all the work that was done in here was done by volunteers, but it was as I call it, New Holland Machine, that gave us that first kickoff big check to get us going, and that we appreciate. Uh, the rest of the museum will be changing, recycled every six months. This section will not change. It's New Holland Machine, and it should be that way, and it should be that way. We're happy to have you here today. Uh, we hope you um, enjoy what you see, and uh, again, we, we appreciate you coming. I should mention, we've been here um, 2012, we opened, and everything was done with volunteers, and when we were all done with the floors and the walls, then we had a silly question. How do we be a museum? <laughs> well, what we're finding is the more people we can get up here, the more things we get. Oh, this is in my attic, it should be in the museum. So if you find stuff in your attic, <laughs> We're, here we are. <laughs> Again, we're happy to have you today, and please enjoy yourselves. How old's the building? How old's the building? Um, so this is the 1790s. The 1790s you're standing in, and the 1800s, and the next two rooms over. Wow. wow. This was a tavern at one time. Uh, we we uh, think that the stagecoach stopped probably at the Philly there. So. Wow. Uh, Wilbur Horning is here also from the museum. He's our local mayor, so if you trip to the sidewalk, he's the guy sitting there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'd like to start right here. Uh, this is Abe Zimmerman. Abe Zimmerman started this company in 1895, and Abe was from the Plain Mennonite sect uh, just east of here, about 10 miles. But I have to tell you a story completely unrelated to uh, agriculture, but I think it sets the tone. Abe, Abe's father was a very conservative person. They were very involved in the church. They decided to build a new church building one time, and Mennonite meeting houses did not have uh, pulpits, but they decided that they should have a small, uh, inauspicious pulpit in this building because the one, I think there was a story about the one minister had a withered arm and he could lay his Bible down. They thought it made sense. His dad said, no, next thing you're going to know, we're going to be like the Methodists and the Episcopalians. We cannot do that. Uh, that pulpit should disappear, die not, which is Pennsylvania Durham, German for at night. They should disappear at night. And lo and behold, sometime later, the pulpit disappeared at night. Uh, it, subsequently, it was found that it was Abe, uh, as a young lad, younger than here, yeah, Abe, <laughs> his sister, and another relative. And so they became kind of disaffected in the church, and slowly uh, they were no longer involved <laughs> in the church. Uh, he, had a, he was already running New Holland Machine Company, 
and, and he had an ad in the paper for a machinist or a foundry worker, I'm not 